Performing prayer to perfection. Performing prayer to perfection, a reason for the descent of material blessings. Describing the characteristics of God-fearing people, the Almighty says meaning. They are people striving to perform the five times daily prayers with Hudur, fulfilling all its foundations and conditions, performing each bow and prostration to the utmost and are consistent in it. One of the numerous of God, the greatest scholar Ibrahim Naha is said, if you will see that a person carelessly bows and prostrates in prayer, then pity his family and children. They are threatened with poverty and their wealth is being depleted. Notice the significance prayer has even for one's worldly well-being. Respected Muslims, many complain that their affairs in this worldly life and at work are going badly. For the most part, they turn out to be people who do not perform their prayer, and if they perform it, then they do so inattentively. There are even people who complain that there is not enough time to perform prayer. As has already been said, God provides for everyone indiscriminate of whether they are believers or disbelievers, or good or bad. But remember, there will be no blessing in the affairs of those who do not perform prayer or observe the fast. Do not differentiate between what is permissible and forbidden, having forgotten their Islamic upbringing and their spiritual heritage. Such people's wealth is deprived of blessing. They do not know and do not even have an inkling that they acquire from one side and lose from another. The life of these people is spent in a race after the worldly, which is actually running away from them. At the end of the day, after leaving all that they have earned to their inheritors, they go without nothing into a dark grave. Wealth given in that way, if it is given at all, is called deceptive. May God protect us from that. Prayer performed to perfection. Khatam al-Asam, one of the nurses of God, went to ask Ibn Yusuf. As asked Khatam, Do you know how to perform prayer? Khatam answered, I do. As then asked, And how do you perform it? Khatam said, When the time for prayer draws close, I meticulously make ablution. I stand at the place for prayer and I get ready. Before my eyes is the Kaaba and God is looking at me. He knows what I have in my heart. My legs are as if they are on the Sirat. To the right of me is paradise, to the left is the fire. And behind me the angel of death is standing. My heart assumes that this is my last prayer. Then, with sincerity and hudur presence, I begin my prayer for the sake of God. I meaningfully read Al-Ham, Surah Al-Fatiha, humbly bow, and then submissively pleading to God, I prostrate. Then I sit and read at tahiyyat with my hope on the Most High. 
Likewise, with ikhlas and hudur, sincerity and presence, I greet the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. While in a state between fear of the Most High and hope on him, I leave the prayer saying salam. Then I get ready to be patient in all circumstances. Then are said, either the way you perform prayer, O Hatam, Hatam answered, that is how I have been performing prayer for 30 years now. Then As cried, admitting that he had never performed prayer in that way. In the commandments regarding prayer, the Most High commands to perform it regularly, not leaving it or missing it, on time and with Jama community. Many scholars consider this is to be Fardul Kifaya, an obligation which at least one person in the community must perform and then the rest of the community is relieved of the obligation for it. If nobody performs it, then the whole community falls into sin. And Imam Ahmad says it is a Fardul Ayn, an obligation which is placed on all Muslims. Next, to perform the prayer with Huzul presence and Khushu, reverence, Eve before the Most High. After the Most High instructed us to perform prayer in that way, people fell into different groups. Some did not accept the prayer at all and their leader was Abu Jahl. May God deprive him of his mercy. Others recognized the prayer as obligatory, yet did not take it upon themselves to perform it. And these were the people of the book, specifically the followers of the Torah. People of a third group performed the prayer at times, but would also miss it, and these were the hypocrites. One other group of people acknowledged the prayer. They pledged to perform the prayer and performed it as God commanded and were consistent in it. Their teacher was the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him and after him all his companions. May God be pleased with them. Ayahs were sent down which told of how which had been prepared for as well as the hardships and struggles which awaited every group in the Akhra eternal life except for those who followed the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him. And all of those groups have always had their followers. Those in whose hearts the heavenly light of knowledge of God has penetrated at the consequence of which they came to see the truth, they having recognized the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him and followed him are coming into Islam even today. They are the followers of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Dear Muslims, if that eternal joy waiting for them and us was just as visible and tangible a salary which we can get in our hands today, then those who forgot about the next life and are distracted by this transient world would not have left it to us. We must be exceedingly grateful to God. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, says, whoever fails to perform one prayer without reason until the time for its performance has run out will spend 80 years in hell. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, the one who leaves the Jama'a community that is, who does not attend the congregational prayer, is not my person and I am not his. One of the great scholars said, He who does not attend the congregational prayer is worse than a drunkard, a murderer of an innocent person, one who tortures his parents and a blasphemer. In the Gospel, the Torah, the Psalms and the Quran, such a person is considered to be deprived of God's mercy, and the angels curse him. It is said that he is not to be visited if he is sick, and his funeral is not to be attended if he dies.